What is up guys, Rick Hackus here, and today we're talking about Borderlands 3 and why I'm a little concerned about it. Now in the background you're seeing gameplay of my PC character in Borderlands 2. I recently bought Borderlands 2 for the PC, it was like under 10 bucks for the Game of the Year edition on Steam, so I thought why not. Now I will say that my character right now has a pretty underleveled B shield, so he's able to kill enemies extremely fast, but I'm extremely squishy so I am going to die a lot in this gameplay. Now this is the third time I've bought Borderlands 2. Bought the original edition, bought the handsome edition on the Xbox One, and now I bought this PC edition. So I absolutely love, love Borderlands 2, one of my all time favorite games. That being said, I'm about to criticize it in this video. Why am I doing that? It's because I love the game. It's because I know it's a fantastic game, but I also think it could have been even better. And that's why I'm making this video about Borderlands 3. Basically, no matter what they release, Borderlands 3 is going to be a fantastic game. I'm going to totally enjoy Borderlands 3. However, it could potentially be even better, and that's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the even better. So don't get too defensive of Borderlands 2 because again, I am going to be criticizing it in this video, especially if you haven't played Borderlands 1. Now, I actually, I know this because I used to, way back in the day, do Borderlands videos and I was bringing up some of these concerns way back when and that's the number one thing that I found is that people would disagree with me and would have not played Borderlands 1, even though one of the main premises of my arguments would be comparing Borderlands 1 to Borderlands 2, so don't be one of those people. Now with all that being said, let's get started. What exactly are my concerns? Why am I concerned about Borderlands 3? Well, simply put, like I said earlier, I used to bring up some of the issues, some of the problems with Borderlands 2 and especially again comparing the Borderlands 1 and 2 gun system. And these problems, although actually some of the videos I made involving these problems got kind of popular, 100,000 plus views, something somewhere in that area, which actually isn't that amazing nowadays, um, but they were never ever addressed or commented on whatsoever by Gearbox, by the developers, so I don't know if they're even aware of them, and that's why I'm concerned about Borderlands 3, is that these problems and the people bringing up these problems, it was basically me and like a few other people were bringing up these problems, never really got a bunch of traction. So I'm worried that the developers like don't even know about this or that they don't even care and that they're going to continue some of the downsides of the Borderlands 2 gun system into Borderlands 3. Okay, so what exactly are these downsides? Well, in Borderlands 1, you had a much more simplistic gun system. A lot of the guns were very similar, like when you're talking about assault rifles. Uh, an SNS manufactured assault rifle, like Borderlands is kind of defined by its different manufacturers, similar to the foundries within Destiny. And, you know, an SNS manufactured assault rifle would be pretty damn similar to an Atlas uh, manufactured assault rifle, which would be pretty damn similar to a Torg, which, you know, like, there kind of was a lot of similarities within the gun system. Uh, the manufacturers did not stand out as much in Borderlands 1. It was a lot more weapon-based. The manufacturer was just kind of a, a detail on the side. You were more interested in the individual weapon itself. In Borderlands 2, they overhauled the gun system entirely and put much more of an emphasis on distinguishing each one of the manufacturers. All bandit weapons are very similar. If you pick up a weapon, you're able to tell that it's a bandit weapon immediately. Same with a Torg weapon, same with a Hyperion weapon. All of these different manufacturers, their weapons look very similar. Like you're e Just by looking at it, you're able to tell, okay, this is a bandit weapon. And all of these manufacturers' weapons all have a trait that makes them uh, similar. Like Hyperion weapons will always, when you shoot them, they get more accurate. Like the hip fire will get more and more accurate as you continue to shoot them. Bandit weapons will always have a large magazine. Torg weapons will always shoot the gyrojet ammunition. Now in a lot of ways, this change to the gun system was an improvement. It did definitely add diversity between the gun systems and the weapons didn't really feel very similar, especially again when you're comparing them between two different manufacturers. However, these changes weren't as peachy as a lot of people think, and I think if people go back and play Borderlands 1, they kind of you know, have this aha moment when they're like, oh yeah, you know, loot used to be 
good. Opening chess used to be really exciting, where in Borderlands 2, that kind of really wasn't the case. Now one of the main reasons on why that is, is because the manufacturers were so similar. Because all bandit weapons, for example, were so similar, you have manufacturers like bandit that just weren't as good as other manufacturers and again bandit is the main culprit of this now you can certainly find good bandit weapons for me like the bandit e-tech assault rifles can be fantastic uh, you have to have a lot of ammunition to use them but they can be very very effective however when you're talking about like when you're level 32 and you open a chest and there's a blue bandit pistol and there's a blue doll pistol when you're comparing these it's not even a choice. It's the doll pistol every single time because the doll pistol is going to have a lot more damage. It's going to be incredibly accurate when compared to the bandit pistol and it's going to have a better overall fire rate. Bandit weapons don't have great damage. They don't have great accuracy. They have a pretty low fire rate, especially the pistols, but they'll have a magazine size of like 80. But when would you ever want a magazine size of 80 and crappy every other stat when you could just have a doll pistol that is shooting those high damaging, insanely accurate bursts at a great rate of fire and it's gonna take down enemies a lot quicker. And that's where you kind of have these problems because someone at Gearbox decided to give bandit weapons crappy every stat except for magazine size bandit weapons just weren't good especially when you start to get to those upper echelon those higher levels when you're nearing level 70 and so on you just never you see a bandit weapon and you don't even bother looking at it you know it's not going to be very good and that's a really sad aspect of borderlands 2 and uh, some of the other manufacturers fall off as well. Uh, Jacobs, for example, it gets to the point where it, early on, actually, Jacobs is very, very good, but it gets to the point usually where Jacobs' weapons just aren't doing enough damage to justify the fact that they're single fire and they generally have lower magazines. Uh, for example, like Jacobs shotguns that only have like one, one or two rounds before you have to reload them they do nowhere near enough damage to justify being stuck reloading as the enemies absolutely drain down upon you. You're much better using a Hyperion shotgun that's going to be able to do multiple shots and get more accurate. It just deals so much more damage. So it's like, why would you ever use the Jacob shotgun? Now, of course, there's exceptions to what I'm saying. So, like, I've found extremely good Jacob's weapons, for example, especially the assault rifles that have the times three in the damage. Those can be fantastic. Don't get me wrong, guys. But, you know, we've got to take opinions into consideration as well. Like, some people don't like Torg weapons. I love Torg weapons, but I've talked to a lot of people who are like, I, I can't use Torg weapons. The gyro jets, I'm just not used to aiming like ahead of the enemy. I just hate Torg weapons. And so for that person, their experience in the game, all Torg, since all Torg weapons are so similar, that's another manufacturer that just, they don't like. So if you have someone who doesn't like Jacob's weapons, doesn't like Torg weapons, doesn't like Bandit weapons, whatever, since all of those weapons are so similar, they're just going to fall out of usefulness. They won't be used, and that definitely is a downside. Whereas in Borderlands 1, it didn't matter the manufacturer, every weapon was up for grabs. And it was kind of a sad thing when they took out explosive as a element. Like, ex you used to get SMGs with explosive uh, ammunition, essentially. You would find explosive sniper rifles, explosive shotguns. They were awesome. But then they took that out entirely and just made it so that the only way to get explosive weapons was Torg with Gyrojet. And that was definitely disappointing. And that was actually a scaling down in the diversity because you're taking away the ability for other manufacturers to have explosive weapons and making it so now only Torg has explosive weapons. Especially since, you know, Torg doesn't manufacture certain things. Like I said, there used to be explosive sniper rifles in Borderlands 1, but Torg doesn't, unfortunately, doesn't make sniper rifles, so there's no explosive sniper rifles in Borderlands 2. Torg doesn't make SMGs, so there's no SMGs in Borderlands 2, and that's really unfortunate. I also really want them to fix the gaps in the manufacturers. Torg should make snipe rifles, and I know people are like, well, how are you going to make a Torg snipe rifle with the gyro gen? It's going to shoot super slow. But, God, just because some people aren't creative enough to come up with these ideas, other people are. And you can easily just have a sit down, the gearbox can have a staff meeting and come up with an awesome Torg 
snipe rifle, it really shouldn't be an issue. And even with guns like that, there's other examples like there should be a Vladov shotgun for goodness sakes, especially since there was tons of Vladov shotguns in Borderlands 1. You just make it a really fast shooting shotgun that doesn't get more accurate like a Hyperion weapon. There should be a Hyperion assault rifle. I don't think anyone can argue that a Hyperion assault rifle wouldn't have a place in the game. Like stuff like that, they really do need to diversify the manufacturers a little bit more. It's really sad that every manufacturer has these like two gaps where it doesn't make weapons. That's a little sad. And the fact that every manufacturer pretty much has two weapons it doesn't make, that really sounds like Gearbox just kind of got lazy at that point. It just doesn't randomly end up with that number. Now another concern of mine which goes exactly into what I was talking about just now about certain you know manufacturers not being as useful is because in Borderlands 2 one of the main problems I had with the game is that the weapons didn't spawn with enough you know high and lower end. The barriers of the weapon were too narrow. Now what I'm talking about is that you know I was just saying that bandit weapons just didn't cut it a lot of the time especially in the end game and the reason being is because you know we're talking about bandit pistols for example the best possible like purple bandit pistol with the best possible damage the damage wasn't that high like it wasn't an amazing damage the da the highest possible damage and the lowest possible damage of like a white bandit pistol the difference wasn't that incredible. Whereas in Borderlands 1, it was. You could find pistols with unbelievably high damages. And same with auto rifles, same with all of that stuff. You could find guns with incredible stats. You could find SMGs in Borderlands 1 with a fire rate of 17. That is unheard of in Borderlands 2. The highest possible like fire rate for a randomly found like no red text SMG is like 10 or 11. Like it's just sad. Whereas Borderlands 1, the barriers between what the worst and the best weapons in terms of stats could be were so much higher. And as a result, it made loot so much more desirable. Every chest you opened in Borderlands 1, you would legitimately like take your time looking at the stats of each different gun. Because again, you could get weapons, you could get shotguns, you could get assault rifles, all of the weapons where the stats just, the stars aligned basically for the stats and it would be like an unbelievable stat roll on, you know, a Torg snipe rifle for example. It would do so much damage, have a great magazine size, it would be extremely explosive it would have like fantastic reload speed all of that stuff again the stars would align and that was almost never the case in Borderlands 2 because the differences the barriers were so narrow you wouldn't have a gun that you would find with unbelievable damage that you're just like like flabbergasted by or an unbelievable fire rate you would just find weapons that were good but that was it now these problems combine to make loot, especially from chests, just not as special. In Borderlands 2, opening a chest, it just it has no meaning. In Borderlands 1, every again, every chest you opened, it was exciting. You would you would actually like you would see a chest and you would get excited to open that chest to see what was in it. In Borderlands 2, aside from like the special Captain Scarlet's chest uh, in the treasure room. It just wasn't the case because you'd open chest after chest after chest and the loot was like always bad because in Borderlands 2 because of what I was talking about because the manufacturers were so strict because the barriers were so narrow for the weapons you could never find randomly generated weapons that were really just fantastic and that would last you into the end game and so in Borderlands 2 when you got close to the end game when you got to level 70 and so on your entire getup, all of your different, you know, weapons and all of your different, your shield, all of that stuff would all have red text. Every single time it would all have red text because the randomly generated weapons just couldn't hack it in the end game. Now with all of that being said, still don't get me wrong, I, I loved Borderlands 2 and even what I'm saying, having all red text weapons and gear, that wasn't even that bad because there's a lot of variety, there's a lot of different weapons 
and you know armor pieces and all that stuff that had red text like you would have so many options for different builds even in the end game however my as you can see from my concerns my main problem with Borderlands 3 my main concern with Borderlands 3 what I want to see changed what I hope is changed in Borderlands 3 is that the randomly generated weapons which was the keystone of the Borderlands loot system when Borderlands 1 first came out, one of the pillars of design, how they sold the game is they said there is millions of weapons in the game. The randomly generated weapon system is fantastic, you can find all of these different combinations, it's just so much variety in gameplay. And then Borderlands 2 kind of lost that because they were too narrow in what a weapon could be because the manufacturers are so similar. It ended up just being that the red text weapons and shields and grenades like orange weapons and shields and grenades and all that stuff just kind of overtook the game because they were the only ones that had a place in the extremely high level end game. So what I really want to see in Borderlands 3 is a semi-return to the Borderlands 1 style of gun system. I'm not saying overhaul the gun system again. You can basically keep the Borderlands 2 gun system, hopefully with some additions as well, but I really want to see the randomly generated loot, the stuff you find in chests, still have a place in the end game. Be able to spawn with those incredible stat rolls of Borderlands 1. And that's what my main concern, that's what I really want to see implemented in Borderlands 3. Now that's it for the video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to rate and share this video, especially if you actually agree with me and want to see this implemented. Now if you want to see more Borderlands content, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. Now if you want to get in touch with me, keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter, that's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel which you can follow as well. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.